Okay, so these first demonstrations, I've got four spray bottles here, each of which contains an ionic substance. Um, I'm going to start with potassium phosphate. You see it's a clear colourless liquid. But when I spray it in this flame, the potassium ions in there are going to uh, absorb energy from the heat and then re-release that energy partially as light. So we'll see a specific colour light come from each of the different ionic compounds. This one is more difficult to see than the others, which is why I did it first. But you may see a kind of a lavender colour, or lilac. That's potassium. And actually, this is a well-known method of determining what's in an unknown substance. So if, if someone gave me a white powder, told me it was an ionic substance, I could spray it on a flame and say, oh, it's got potassium in it, if it did that. Uh, a very common one here is sodium chloride, or salt, and you may recognize the color that you get. Yeah. Very bright orange. And part of the reason that a wood fire is orange is because wood contains a lot of sodium. So it's quite a commonly recognized color. Now this one, you will also recognize, but from fireworks. This is strontium. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got one more to demonstrate. I'll have to edit this part out. <laughs> I hate having to do that in front of people. Okay, and the last one I've got, you may recognize from the color, it's copper sulfate. And most copper solutions are a kind of a blue color, copper two solutions, <coughs> blue color. But when I spray it on the flame, we get a beautiful green. And in fact, these colors are used in various pyrotechnic displays for the colors that you see in uh, fireworks and so on. So I'm going to put that out for the moment. Now that's technically not chemiluminescence, it's, it's light associated with heat rather than with the chemical reaction itself. This next reaction gives out no heat at all, but it does give out quite a lot of light. It's quite well known, and in fact the chemical that we use to make the light is commonly known as luminol, uh, from the same place as luminous, which uh, obviously means it gives out light. So uh, this is a little uh, device. I built with a friend of mine called Greg, uh, who's the medical laboratory assistant teacher, and uh, I'm very grateful to him for helping me make this. I have to move this explosion down. I didn't foresee that. Okay, so when I mix these two liquids, we should see a bright blue glow. going to be a failure there. All right, so it's not a very, very bright glow, as you can see, and it, it dies off pretty quickly. There is another reaction which works like this, which lasts for a good few hours, and that's the one that they use in uh, those glow sticks that you get in parties and that kind of thing. Um, and those have been known, actually, if you put them in the freezer, they've been known to glow for months, because the, uh, the cold temperatures keep the reaction speeds down. What are those two liquids you have here? Uh, well, one is a solution containing the luminol and uh, a catalyst and a couple of other things to keep the pH steady. And the other one is hydrogen peroxide, a very dilute solution, which provides the oxygen which is required to oxidize the luminol. When the luminol is oxidized, it forms uh, a, a new compound. But when it's formed, the electrons are further away from the nuclei than they should be. And as they relax, that's when the photons are given out as light. I'll do one more pair, just for fun. I thought this was going to go faster, so I wasn't... 
made quite a lot because I thought I wouldn't. Oh, a bit of an air trap, but I think that's going to be all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you can as a glow stick. Yeah, and the, the glow sticks, they contain the two solutions, one inside the plastic and the other one inside a piece of glass tubing inside the plastic. When you bend the tube, that breaks the glass, mixes the two solutions, and you get your reaction. So uh, I'll just combine the two solutions in here, just so you can see the effect of a large amount of it. And you'll see it glows very bright, but not for very long. Season parallel, though. <laughs> put that down there. So this cylinder I have here, this measuring cylinder, contains nitrous oxide, N2O, also known as laughing gas. Um, it's completely invisible. <laughs> it's working already. <laughs> it's completely invisible. <laughs> it's, it's a clear colourless gas, so it's very hard to tell that it's in there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it with this liquid I've got here, which is carbon disulfide. Um, it's just like carbon dioxide, but with the oxygen's replaced with sulphurs. And uh, I'm going to swirl it around a bit, and then I'll throw uh, a lighted splint in. And the, the reaction is known as the barking dog reaction, because the sound that you get from it sounds an awful lot like a dog barking. Um, and at the same time, you'll see a bright blue flash of light. Trouble is, it stinks. I'm just swirling it around now. Try and get as much of it into the gas phase as possible. Again. And I will warn you, this one is quite loud. Okay, so if everyone's ready. simply that it compresses the gases beneath it as it goes down the tube. And uh, when I turn the lights back up, you'll see that it's coated with sulphur, which is why I asked if anyone had the sulphur allergy, because that's coated with sulphur now. Uh, so that's the last one. Uh, in a couple of weeks, the final demonstration will be... In a couple of weeks, the final demonstration will be the... Uh, the renowned thermite reaction that Mythbusters use all the time. And we'll be doing that one outside for safety's reasons. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Thanks,